So to those, take me back to 15 if you would. To those who have been cleansed, God have mercy. All things are pure. So when I've been cleaned by the blood of Jesus Christ, then everything in my life reflects that. Can I get an amen? But unto them that are defiled, that word means pollute or contaminate. And unbelieving, which is self-explanatory, there's nothing pure. Nothing in there has... So, what does that tell us? Now, if you read this scripture like that it's meant to be, that business of being saved and no change don't fly in the face of this scripture. Okay? Of being saved. And, and we, I had another talk with somebody the other day about funeral sermons. You know how everybody that dies, according to that preacher, is going to heaven. Okay? But, and, and I'm nobody's judge. I don't preach people into heaven. I don't preach them out of hell. I don't preach them into purgatory. I don't preach them into the middle line. I, I just talk about their life and try to help their family and, and tell them, you need the Lord. But when you've been cleaned by the blood of Jesus Christ, there is a desire for purity in you. But when you have not been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ, you are defiled, polluted, or contaminated, and unbelieving. You don't have any faith, and there's nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. Now, what, what do you think for a second that even... Even their mind and conscience is defiled. What's before even, you think? You see all the bad stuff they can do. If you're defiled, polluted, contaminated by the things of the world, you do things that pleases the flesh, that, that pleases the world, that fits into the world system, and even their mind and conscience is defiled. Did that, that make sense right there? We recognize the outward things. Oh, Jesus. We recognize the outward things, the works of the flesh. We recognize them. We pick them up and we judge them. We label them. We identify them by what's going on on the outside. But the Word of God is letting us know that the problem has took place on the inside. Again, you look on the outer man, but God looks at the heart. And the reason why they act the way they do is their mind and their conscience is defiled. Their mind being the underlying attitude to life that controls behavior and their conscience be their influence, their motivation. How in the world do you try to change somebody that does not know they're doing wrong? That's why we have got to have an anchor. We have got to have a starting point and it's the Word of God. That's what tells us. I told you about that a couple of weeks ago. That's why we got the law in the first place, Brother David. It's so we would know right from wrong. They profess that they know God with their mouth and otherwise. We got more ways to do that now than there's ever been. I'm still amazed. I'm still amazed that you can put my dog, sweet Fido, that we've had for 13 years, is laying limp in the floor. And there will be 178 people in a row that will all say they're praying for that dog. I've never seen the like of religious people in my life. 
that I have to kick them off my page because I see that religious post. Pray for me. Pray for my dog. Pray for my hog. Pray for my squirrel. Pray that I find my ring that I drop down the sink. And then give the next person a cussing. They profess God have mercy. The Bible says it can't happen. Not of the same fountain does not come bitter water and sweet. They profess that they know God, but in works deny Him. Think, now think about this just for a minute. What does it mean to deny Him? God help me. But there's a reason for it. What is it? Think about everything that stops. Don't, don't say out too much stuff. Think about everything we've talked about. For the carnal mind is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. The carnal mind is enmity against God. So they deny God. Why? Because it conflicts with what this wants. It conflicts and they deny God. That's, that's exactly right, Brother McKinney. The Spirit will lead and guide you. That's a guarantee. It's always there. But they deny Him by their actions, by their works. Being abominable. That is something that is esteemed by man, esteemed by the flesh, and disgusting to God. And this makes us uh, incapable of being used by God. So they're abominable, which has to do with our actions that reflect our spirit in the eyes of God. Our actions that, that God says, I can't stand them doing that. That disgusts God. Disobedient. And if you're obedient, you're obedient. I can't get into it very long, but I encourage you to read. I'm going to preach about it again. I preached a sermon. I think it went on for two or three weeks. Samuel, Samuel told Saul, God wants you to wipe out the Amalekites. Kill them all. Kill all their critters. Get rid of all their stuff. Kids, lambs, goats, oxen, puppies, goldfish. Hamsters, get it rid of it all. And so Saul wades in, he pulls out his sword, and he starts picking and choosing. And you know the truth of the matter is, Brother David, he almost did what God said. He saved Agag and a few of the nobles. Brother Robbie, the best, the best of the cattle, the best of the sheep. And he justified it by saying what? We save them to be sacrifices. Man, you can't sacrifice something that belongs to somebody else. But you know something, Brother David? The Bible says, from that time on, God was done with him. Samuel wept before the Lord bitterly. And Saul was rejected. And he probably did 90% of what the man of God said. To be obedient means to be obedient to God, the Word of God, and the man of God. And to every good work, reprobate. Somebody want to tell me what reprobate means? Void of judgment. That's the exact definition. It means you no longer have the ability to know right from wrong.
So basically, you wouldn't know a good work if it slaps you in the face. Brother Robbie, I think there's somewhere in the Bible. Does it not say that people are going to persecute us and kill us and think they're doing God a favor? You know these people out there that are spouting all this crazy stuff off in the news and, and everything. And, and these kids, think about how many of these, these college age kids move over to Afghanistan and move over to Kuwait and, 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 and Justin put a rag on their head and grow out a beard and, and claim to be part of them. And everybody, anybody with a half a brain and one eye knows that ain't right. I, I'm not going to get there tonight, but you can for homework next time read chapter number 1 of Romans and we'll get there. But I want to let you know it tells you what happens when you begin to spiral out of control, Brother David. That's where you end up. Brother Ray, you no longer even... Them kids that we get mad at and we get angry at, when I see them, when I see them over there fighting on the side of the Taliban and stuff, I get mad at them. But the truth of the matter is, Brother Robbie, they're this. They think they're right. And that's why the church of the living God, uh, uh, we have got to, we got to stop backing up for goodness sakes. Yes. And we got to stand up uh, and we got to declare truth. Uh, we got to declare the word of God. We got to preach righteousness and holiness and peculiarity unto God. Because if you don't receive a love for the truth, The Bible says that God will send you a strong delusion. You will believe a lie and be damned. I have no option but to preach the truth. I have no option but to preach holiness unto God and separation unto God. But God have mercy on us. God have mercy on us. If we don't start putting into action what thus saith the word of the Lord. Well, the Holy Ghost has been dealing with me some things about some things in my own life. We've got some kind of a, an insatiable, unhealthy desire to please people. But Johnny, I find myself, I find myself when somebody comes up to me and says, Do you know Bill Jones? That I really bad want to say, Yes! Because they really want me to know him. And it's like, I feel like that I need to kneel down before him and say, from the depths of the sea and from the heights of the highs, would you please forgive me because I don't know Bill. I had a conversation with a fellow here in town about that today, and he said, GL, you're so right. We're eat up with pleasing people. Even at the point of compromising our integrity. I have the perfect solution to that problem. Please God. And then... He weeds out who gets pleased or who doesn't get pleased according to His will. You can't keep going the path you're going. You can't keep fighting the battles you're fighting. Let me read this to you. Brother David, I probably stored it. may be a couple of more weeks. If I keep holding off, you're going to have like six months worth of stuff. I know how you do. Studying and writing and studying and writing and studying and writing. I wish I had that ability to do that. I remember hearing Brother Blash speak on more than one occasion. I went and took a seminar that he taught on dealing with same-sex attraction in the church. And he told us some things, Brother Terry, that I didn't get it all wrote down. So today I was just thinking, man, and I... I, uh, I even tried to take a nap for a few minutes. It didn't work. Uh, jumped up and started reading and thinking and pondering some more. 
And I remembered him saying that. And so I Googled it. Now, I'm not reading this based upon its subject material. That's not my purpose. But I feel like there's somebody in here needs to hear it. Okay? My purpose is to share the principle with you. The subject material is for your benefit. I googled the effects of pornography on the mind. And this is what I found. Yep. You read that right. Porn physically changes your brain. One of the most exciting developments in our understanding of the brain in the last two decades is the, some, is the discovery of something called neuroplasticity. Neuro meaning brain and plasticity meaning changeability. In other words, scientists have discovered that your brain is a lot like a never-ending game of Tetris. Are you familiar with Tetris? You, you situate the blocks to make them form a solid line. Constantly laying down new pathways based upon your experiences. To explain how it works, brain scientists have a saying, neurons that fire together, wire together. If you're wondering what a neuron is and why it's on fire, here's what that means. A neuron is a brain cell, and when brain cells get activated at the same time by something you see or hear or smell or whatever, they release chemicals that help strengthen the connection between those neurons. For example, when you eat something delicious, your brain releases dopamine, a chemical that makes you feel good. Or if you hold hands with someone you care about, your brain releases a chemical called oxytocin, which helps you bond with people. Do you remember that feeling the first time you ever got to hold hands with a little girl or a little boy? And you get all sweaty and you get butterflies and you get short of breath and that's it. Sister Betty says she still feels that way when Brother Ray holds hands with her. <laughs> So, if every time you went to visit your uncle, he gave you a great big hug and then took you out for ice cream, you'd probably start feeling pretty great about your uncle, since your brain would build pathways connecting your uncle with feeling happy and loved. You have these kinds of brain pathways for all sorts of things, riding a bike, eating a sandwich, and walking the dog. And when a person looks at porn, their brain creates new pathways for that too. Just like other addictive substances, porn floods the brain with dopamine. But since the brain gets overwhelmed by the constant overload of chemicals that comes with consistent porn use, it fights back by taking away some of its dopamine receptors, which are like tiny ears on the end of a neuron that hear dopamine's message. With fewer receptors, even if the brain is putting off the same levels of dopamine in response to porn, the user can't feel dopamine's effect as much. And as a result, the porn they were looking at doesn't seem as arousing or exciting, and many porn users go hunting for more porn or hardcore porn to get the same effect the old porn used to offer. As a frequent porn user's brain acclimates to the new levels of dopamine flooding through it, regular activities that would normally set off a burst of dopamine and make the person feel happy aren't strong enough to register much anymore, leaving the user feeling down or uneasy whenever they go for a while without looking at porn. That's why pornography can be so addictive. Once addiction sets in, the user has a whole new set of problems because addiction damages the part of the brain that helps you think things through to make good choices. The brain's limit setting system is damaged. For more than 10 years, studies have shown that drug addictions can cause the brain's frontal lobes to start shrinking. Now, while frontal lobe sounds really technical, basically, basically it's the part of the brain that controls logical problem solving and decision making. But recent studies have found that it's not just drugs that cause that kind of damage. The same problems show up with other kinds of addictions such as overeating, internet addictions, and sexual compulsion. Here's the really scary part. 
This is the principle I want you to grasp about what I'm talking about tonight. The more porn a person looks at, the more severe the damage to their brain becomes and the more difficult it is to break free. But there's good news too. Neuroplasticity works both ways. That means that the damage to the brain can be undone when someone gets away from unhealthy behaviors. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I said all that to say this. I don't, please don't, don't think. But statistics say, statistics say, and, and I know there's a large, large number of women in here, a pornography viewage among women has risen about 65%. Uh, used to be mostly all men. Now it's, it's coming close to leveling out. But I, I didn't say that. To, to jump on the pornography bandwagon, but statistically speaking, there's somebody in here that has trouble with it. Statistically speaking. But I said that to say those habits, the things I brought out tonight of our responses to what people say, to what people do, you know, if if you've got a nice front porch and the color motif is, you know, zebra striped and somebody just drives by and decides that you need an aqua chase lounge to sit right in the middle of all your tiger striped stuff. You know it's not against the rules to say thanks, but no thanks. I appreciate the thought. Ain't working for me. But instead, if you take it and set it there, and it looks terrible and ghastly, and you want to vomit, but you keep it, that's something that you need to stop doing. So you're... Uh, so your brain can heal itself. Now that same story happened. Actually happened. Had nothing to do with nobody's front porch and nothing to do with any decorations. But I just dressed it up so you wouldn't know who it was or what was happening. But I was told, you better use that or you're going to make them mad. So I have to do something that I really don't want to. No rationale to it. This has been a long time ago, too, so stop trying to think about what I'm talking about. Man, y'all crazy folks. Most of you didn't even come to church here then. And then, you know what I start doing, Sister Maria? Well, you know what? Maybe I do. Don't like it. Don't want it. Don't need it. But I'm going to take it. You following me? I got to start changing those behaviors. 
I just, that, that's just an example of something that's been on my mind for a long time. Because it's when I started realizing I want my mind to be holy. Because when I do that, what happens to me? I get resentful. I get aggravated. I feel like I've been taken advantage of. None of that's true either. If I would have just said, well, thank you, but I don't really need that. I really appreciate it. Could I pass it on to somebody else? Or do you know somebody else that might want it? I'm talking about it. And, and then I grieve over it. Are you following me? Am I making any sense? Am I the only moron amongst us? That's just an example. If, if, if you're coming to church expecting somebody to hurt your feelings, they will. They may not know it. And they may not mean to. And they probably never will know it. But you're going to let it eat at you. I know I'm supposed to be talking about stop looking at naked women and naked men. And I know I'm supposed to talk about stop lying and stop smoking and stop playing dice on the street corner. But I ain't supposed to talk about stop, stop entertaining crazy feelings. Stop. So Brother David, our mind can heal. Yeah. With the affections and lusts. Absolutely. But I gotta become aware. I gotta become aware that I've got an issue, and then I get on my knees. I get on my knees and crucify the flesh. See, I want a holy mind. Stand with me. For the majority of us, for the majority of us, we're safe from bad sinning. Hello? Can I get an amen? amen. Ain't nobody in here tonight. Ain't nobody in here tonight fixing to go out to the Mexican place and throw down about 10 margaritas. Probably ain't happening. Probably not. Nobody going down here and drink till they pass out down at the Mexican house. Probably ain't happening. But every day, every day, there's stuff coming in here. And if I let it stay, I will get to a place where I no longer know who's my friend and who's my enemy. I no longer know what's right or wrong. And I find myself a little shell to protect myself from everybody because everybody's out to get me. I'm talking about holiness. Holiness. The carnal mind is not subject. Lord, I know what the Bible says, but did you see what they did to me? Like we think that the Lord is going to say, Oh, I didn't think you caught that. Go ahead and knock their head off. <laughs>